G'day, fools. Scott Phillips here from The Motley Fool with yet another in our ever-expanding series of our favourite investment books. Now, I had called this series My Favourite Investment Book, Singular, and then today's guest, Ed Vesely, decided that he had a few he wanted to share with us. So I thought, you know what? This can be a bigger series. So if you're liking it, thank Ed. If you don't like it, well, blame Ed, I suppose. G'day, Ed. How are you, mate? I'm not bad, Scott. Thanks. How are you? <laughs> Good, I'm exceptionally well. Thank you, mate. Thank you for making the time, buddy. I appreciate it. I know you've got a busy schedule. Um, investing books are one of those things that, I mean, there are, there are thousands and thousands of them. I can only imagine, I mean, you and I started reading investment books when you only get them in a bookshop. These days, you could probably type investing on Amazon and get 10,000 titles, I suppose. So the key for most people is trying to work out what should they actually read, what's worth it, what's useful, what's made an impact on us. And you've chosen one by Noel Whittaker. Which book are you going to tell us about, mate? He's written a few, but look, I can't go past uh, the original book, Making Money Made Simple. It's Good a premise. <laughs> yeah, it is. Look, it's in its 23rd edition now. Wow. And look, I, th I think, honestly, Scott, I wouldn't be here talking to you today if it wasn't for that book. I don't think I would have yeah, even impressive. discovered investing uh, if it wasn't for that. Now, look, it's not an... In an investing book per se, okay. it discusses investing, but as Noel uh, himself uh, talks about in the introduction, he, he tries to introduce people to a world of prosperity, the world of investment and finance, mm. and as a down to earth money guide for everyone. So nice. I love that. And the topics included, for example, the importance of saving, which is, you know, it sounds pretty obvious, Yeah, <laughs> but a, a lot of people uh, either yeah. can't save or, don't save and perhaps they they can save but they don't realize that they have the ability to do so i know that budgets are very tight um, but that's always been the case yeah, so we've got right. the importance of savings we've got budgeting it goes into income tax property capital gains tax uh, mm -hmm. credit card ratings um, credit, sorry ratings for borrowings mm -hmm. insurance superannuation so there's a lot in there nice. but look this is the funny thing the one the one topic that it discussed, which really resonated with me, was uh, the equity market and investing okay. in shares, <laughs> which is, as I say, which is why I'm here. Just as well, exactly. Yeah, that's right. So um, it's funny that book just resonated. It was a book that was actually picked up, I think, at Christmas time. It was a, a gift from my mum to my dad, and I'm assuming okay. he read it. But I picked it up. It was on the Christmas holidays. I had nothing better to do, so I thought I'll pick up this book and read it. And I have to say it. I think it's changed my my life and the way the way I approach finances. A lot of this I never learned in school. We we certainly did study the the stock market game in in high school, like uh, a lot of other people watching this would have, I yep. suppose. But yep. I, it just didn't resonate. It just uh, I just didn't get it. Uh, I thought, what's the point in trying to predict where a share price might be in six months' time on some specky miner? <laughs> what this book um, introduced to me was the importance of um, uh, earning money to save money to invest money. And that we do have financial independence options if we if we can choose if we can uh, go down that path. Mm. He uh, Noel Whitaker talks about only eight percent of the population perhaps making it financially. And I think the thing that really resonated was the introduction to the stock market, as I say. And he, he had a chart in there. I think it was starting from around 1979 through to whatever the date was. Mm. And uh, the point was was that the market had never failed to rise above its previous high point following a decline. And I thought to myself. All right, so we know about volatility. Yes, market prices go up and down for particular securities, but I thought that's not a bad trade-off if we're just going to go through that volatility. But if, if we can understand that the market has never failed to rise above that previous high point uh, following the decline, I think that's actually a pretty good trade-off. I'm, I'm happy to actually get those higher gains from investing just by holding on. And I guess that's uh, really uh, been my, my, my approach since I, I started out quite a number of years ago. So I, it, it's a book too that I would be deliberately buying every five to 10 years, things change. Okay. I mean, it's not just about shares, it's about superannuation, as yeah, I said, there's yeah. a lot of other things, but it's a really good book uh, that introduces people to finance. And I think it's, uh, for me, it's been a life changer. So, I mean, I, there's a lot of other books I can talk about, but that's where it all started mm -hmm. for me. That's awesome, mate. I really appreciate hearing. I think that's, you know, that's our, our kind of, you know, mission at the Motley Fool as well as, you know, put information out there. That's what this YouTube channel is all about information out there for people who maybe as you say we probably learned exactly the same things at school but your 15 year old 16 year old brain is just not ready for it a lot of people say oh i wish i was taught that at school 
My answer is usually you actually were. <laughs> we just we just yeah. weren't ready to hear it. And that's not a criticism. It's just you've got yeah. to kind of be at a place where you can actually take in the information, whether it's literally a place like on Christmas holidays or just at a place in life when the messaging actually just just clicks. There's just that something happens in our brains. We can hear the same thing over and over again. And finally, it's like, yep, got it. I understand that now. Yeah. Um, and that's a really important one. As you say, just do it really simply, right? Laying out the, the different component parts of our financial lives and saying, here's what it is. Here's how you understand it. Here's how you make the most of it. It's it's kind of on one level really simple. But on the other hand, if you've never done it before and, and having it all in one mm-hmm. place, sounds like a pretty good book. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, good, it's a great starting point. And I think even for people that... Are investing or have properties or have shares at the moment it's it's still a very good book to read because it mm-hmm. it just brings you back it brings you back to the basics and I, I think it's uh, something that would be a fantastic christmas gift for anyone nice mate so you talked about the fact that uh the the, the market chart from 79 till whenever was kind of one of the things that really stuck out to you and kind of took you from maybe to oh my goodness this is this is absolutely doable by the way i hope that over the last 12 or 18 months um, other investors knew that as well because we saw mm. during the COVID recession a whole lot of people abandoned the market. Um, and finally, if I've ever read this book by Noel, although I, I like Noel Whitaker, um, and it's exactly the message we were sending to, to people from March 2020 right through saying, look, yeah. the market has never not got back to those highs. Assuming it won't is, is frankly, I think, silly. And also, if you believed that was true, when the market was down 40%, assuming it got back to that previous high, that because you're on a lower base, that was something like a 60% gain just by letting it get back to the previous high and then hopefully above that. And as we record this in early August, 2021, the market here is, is hitting new records. So it's a, um, it's a it's a timeless lesson, mate, which is important, as you say, from 79 to whenever you read it to today, mm. uh, that message remains the same. Anything else that stood out to you from the book? Uh, well, I haven't been, yeah, just say I haven't been in it since 79 myself. I'm not that not old. <laughs> Uh, look, just the just the concepts of um, investing. Look, there was a, a lot of discussion to whether you you go directly with shares or managed funds. I did a bit okay. of both earlier on. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing uh, starting out with managed funds, but I, I think just being exposed to equities in the first place is mm-hmm. a fantastic thing. Uh, look, we, we we also have to accept too that volatility is not really something that we try to we should try to avoid. It's really something that's just a feature of the, of the sh- share markets and. Yeah. If we can accept that up front and if we can accept a strategy in dealing with it, which to me is just sensible saving and progressive investing throughout time and then just holding the exposure to equities over many decades, I, I think um, what I got from the book is that, is that you just can't help but do well. But of course, we can all hijack our, our, our chances of doing well if we oh, decide man, to we? just sell at the first point that yeah, uh, shares fall 10% yeah. or so. It's you just have to take that approach and just be uh, fairly methodical about it and, and try to remain calm when when uh, we know that the feature of the share market is is that we are going to see these 10 and 20 and 30% declines from time to time. We just have to accept that up front. But ironically, it's when share prices fall, it's actually, that's when the risks are actually lower because the share price right. is cheaper. That's right. And that, but it's very hard to see that uh, in a panic, I suppose. And uh, I think it's just a case of... Um, just having a, a strategy and a plan in dealing with investments in the first place mm. and then going ahead and doing it and then holding on and st- remaining true to that strategy for the rest of your lives, no matter how old you are. If you're young, it's fantastic. If you're in your teens or 20s, you might only have a 1000 or $2,000 to to start with. But mm. I think um, uh, no matter how old anyone is who's watching this, it's really a good idea to have some exposure because... Um, we don't know when we're going to stop work necessarily, and we certainly don't know when we're going to die. I think it's just a case of we need some growth investments in our in our portfolios just to ensure that we can get ahead of inflation. Inflation now is actually quite moderate, but that doesn't mean it can't change in the future. So we just have to accept change as well in the overall economic environment that we're all living in. Mate, as always, sensational advice. There you go for our viewers who are getting some free financial advice from Ed Vesley right now. Wonderful advice as always, mate. You are always a voice of calm, a voice of reason, a voice of steady progress. And we really appreciate that about you. Uh, Thank you for spending some time with us, Ed. For those of you watching, if you want to see more from Ed, and frankly, you should want to, um, as I said, there's probably going to be more videos in this series after Ed's uh, suggestion. I think there will be. Make sure sure you do. (laughs) So do this for me. Like the channel, subscribe to the channel, and please hit that notification bell to make sure you get alerted every time we release a new video like this one, but also like our stocks of the week, our stocks in focus. Uh, we're doing our media appearances, companies uh, in, in detail. We do a whole lot of stuff on this YouTube channel. It's getting bigger and bigger and better and better. Uh, all thanks to people like Ed who, who leave us 
give us their time uh, and make some time for us so we can share these videos with you. So, mate, thank you for doing that. Thank you to those of you watching it. And until next time, full on. Full on.